Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines here. Bricks Bank building the next normal. You're going to want it. And Grayscale gets a win against the SEC. Who doesn't love that? Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow us on Twitter and YouTube for exclusive content. Right now, it's still $1.09 trillion market cap for crypto. The market is up 0.1%. I'm going to refresh on that a little bit. Actually, it isn't right. I thought something was wrong. And we just had Grayscale get a win. I was like, something's not right. You can see the news and the market reacting to the news of the Grayscale win. We're going to get into it. $1.14 trillion cryptocurrency market, and the market is responding up 4.3%. Right now, Bitcoin is up 5.6% just in the last couple of hours. It says in the last hour, 0.9%, but I actually think it's a little more than that. 27,500 uh, plus for Bitcoin, 1718 and change for Ethereum and Tether market caps, 83.3. You can see money moving from there back into Bitcoin. We see XRP 53 cents right now, and it's up 3.1% in the 24 hour, 47 up on the seven day. Let's get started right here. By the way, before before we do, I want to tell you, if you haven't taken advantage of the Digital Perspectives Mastermind group, join that group and the hundreds of other people that really make it a, truly a mastermind group. Look, you don't handle your investments the way people handle a lotto winning, right? 75% of all lotto winners go broke inside of three years. You want to grow with your portfolio. This is the place to do it. There are very real conversations going on in here about how to not only grow your wealth, but maintain it once you have it. No doubt about it. Let's get started this morning. Link underneath the video for that. Eleanor Terrett brings it to us and says, Breaking a D.C. Court of Appeals has granted Grayscale's petition for review to convert its Grayscale Bitcoin trust into a Bitcoin spot ETF. As ordered by the SEC's order be vacated, it says here documents and details to come. And let's look at this to follow. Today, this is from Grayscale statement themselves, says today the D.C. Circuit Court ruled that in favor of Grayscale in our lawsuit challenging the SEC's decision denying Grayscale trust uh, conversion to an ETF. This is a monumental step forward for American investors, the Bitcoin ecosystem, and all those who have been advocating for Bitcoin exposure through the added protections of the ETF wrapper. We're going to get more into that in a second. Grayscale team and our legal advisors are actively reviewing the details outlined in the court's opinion and will be pursuing next steps with the SEC. We will share more information as soon as it's uh, available, obviously. And then here we see John Deaton say, I predict a win for Grayscale. When you fight back, the SEC isn't as successful at winning as Gary Gensler and others would have you believe. Justice Stewart Alderati recently tweeted out that the SEC has lost four out of five of the last cases before the Supreme Court. Don't forget that. And here we see right here, Bloomberg uh, Television going on and on and on and saying how great this is. Take a listen. It's massive. This has been a years long pursuit for Grayscale. Remember, it has been fighting the SEC's decision and now it has uh, the courts in their favor. If you look at the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, this is the main entity that would face a conversion. This is one of the longest standing largest trusts holding Bitcoin in which retail and institutional investors have been able to gain exposure for many, many years now. You are looking that discount to net asset value really narrowing here. At this very moment, it stands at about 24% under its net asset value, but that is expected to narrow as they get closer to the ETF conversion, which has really become a main thesis for investing in this fund and beyond that is as you're saying there is a whole host mm -hmm. of other ETF filings in the pipeline and this is voting well for those firms I will also say that in addition to the grayscale Bitcoin trust finding uh, some love on the heels of this decision you are also seeing Bitcoin itself up above 27,000 it's a uh, four almost five percent jump in the market right now because the idea here is that by a potential conversion here for the grayscale Bitcoin trust into 
an ETF, it could draw massive adoption from financial advisors, retail investors. Think about how much money on the sidelines uh, could be sitting there from the likes of the large wirehouses that could become more comfortable about putting their clients into a regulated ETF mm -hmm. exposed to Bitcoin rather than spot Bitcoin itself. You know, it's a great point that she's making, but I just want to say, <laughs> if mainstream media are the puppets of Wall Street, and I believe they are, then it would appear that Wall Street wants your money in Bitcoin, but not XRP. The funny part about that is XRP is the only digital asset with legal clarity in the United States. I think I'll take door number two for all the money, as they say. This here from Jeremy Hogan said, everyone welcome big money to the table for better or worse. I say he's right for better or worse. Here comes the big money. Just remember the big money can build it up and tear it down. They love doing that. So you better know where you're going with your money. Shout out to Perry Ann Boring here from the Chamber of Digital Commerce. For years, I believe Bitcoin spot ETF was a matter of when, not if. Today's decision is a milestone for retail investors. Soon, everyone can tap into the past decade's top performing asset with investor protections. Get ready for the wave. You know, I think she says it best uh, uh, right here. You getting into the ETF is going to come with that wrapper of investor protection being exposed to the market in that Bitcoin ETF. And that right there, I believe, is going to bring the wave that she's talking about. No questions about it. And then Jake Travinsky from the Blockchain Association says, Grayscale wins. The SEC's war on crypto is falling apart in the courts. And he couldn't be more right than he is right there. There, no doubt about it. Meanwhile, around the rest of the world, let's look, because think of this now. This is in the U.S. We get that spot Bitcoin ETF. We have a halving for Bitcoin in April of next year. The, I, I, I think we're watching this stage be set for an absolute explosion of money to enter this market. Hong Kong Financial Secretary says blockchain is breakthrough technology. We know how big of a financial hub Hong Kong is. 12 days away, G20 global crypto regulations have been discussed heavily amongst the G20 nations and the IMF and the Financial Stability Board. What will September 9th through the 10th bring? We don't know, but we know the recent BRICS summit that just ended the 22nd through the 24th of this month was powerful and the addition of major oil producing countries. Here we see uh, the shipment of Turkey's goods to Saudi Arabia has jumped by more than a whopping 600% from January through July of this year, just six months. Everyone's saying that BRICS is not a big deal, but it keeps getting bigger. Remember, it was the Sheikh Mohammed's, uh, I think it's Mohammed bin Salman said that uh, BRICS is going to be the Europe 2.0, the Middle East is going to be the Europe 2.0. And obviously Saudi Arabia just recently invited to join BRICS, I should say. Now here is the BRICS bank, the new development bank, and it's the president, Mr. Marcos. I want you to hear what he says about how the bank is building for the next normal <laughs> and I have to agree. Uh, John 1140 down here says, I heard Nostro Vostro accounts go bye bye. And, you know, he doesn't say it directly, but it does sound like the next normal could be involved with that kind of action. And we know what kind of asset and company are positioned to help eliminate prefunding of accounts. It's Ripple and XRP. Another one where it's traditional physical infrastructure. Everything is going to be embedded together and we are going to have a bigger and bigger input of technology in how infrastructure projects are designed in the future. In this next normal, as it also has been said here, multilateral development institutions and particularly multilateral banks have a crucial role to play, not only because they are uh, catalyzers of more investment, bringing in uh, 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 resources that are sitting out there, parked out there, and that could find a much more interesting use if they were directed to infrastructure investment, not only because multilateral development banks are at the forefront of discussing what the new development policies are going to be in the world to come, but also because they help to fight the global governance and the global cooperation gap. Multilateral institutions are a great hub 
for international cooperation at a moment in history where international cooperation is so much needed. The best news possible, my friends, going forward in terms of the next normal is that building the next normal is within our reach. It's not something that is determined by destiny, but it is in our hands to define what the next normal is going to be and a next normal that brings about more prosperity for all. And we know that the next normal for the New Development Bank, which is the bank for BRICS nations, is to pull away from the U.S. dollar, strengthen their own currencies, and then ultimately introduce a BRICS reserve currency. That's what the next normal is. Now, I'm not going to play this next clip, but I want to tell you that Europe's Christine Lagarde determination for the rise of cryptocurrencies and CBDCs, she said, I'm really pleased that the attention... I'm sorry about that. I don't know if you hear those sirens, but it's not for me, but they are in the background. I'm really pleased that the attention is now focused on the role that cryptos can play. We have to be a little bit ahead, and I hope we can accelerate the work. Now, she doesn't say it in this clip, but I'm reminding everybody of an older clip that she talked about citing specifically Ripple and Circle as entities that could actually bring solutions to the financial sector. Keep your eyes on the European Central Bank. And keep your eyes on the BIS. I want to listen to this from 2020 at Davos, but it is so relevant what he says. Take a listen. Benoit Coyier, take a listen here. Where do you see the biggest advantage to stablecoins? Well, it's about, uh, it's about having a technology that, uh, that cuts across borders and that can help cut the, the cost and, uh, and, uh, and improve the speed of cross-border mm. payments, which everyone agrees now uh, are too slow and, and too costly. So I would say the, the top priority for the global community is not about CBDC. CBDC will come in, so central bank digital currency, it will come in due course in different ways, and we're, right. we're working on it. But the top urgent priority is to improve uh, cross-border payments, in particular for uh, low-income and developing economies, because that's a matter of financial inclusion, and that's a matter right. of growth for the global economy. It's not about CBDC. CBDC will come in so central bank digital currency. It will come in due course in different ways, and we're, right. we're working on it. But the top urgent priority Listen. is to improve uh, cross-border payments, in particular for uh, low-income and developing economies, because that's a matter of financial inclusion. That's exactly right. Ripple joins the BIS Cross-Border Payments Task Force, and the task force is a part of Bank of International Settlements Committee on Payments and Market Infrastructure. The BIS know the real way to remain relevant in an ever-changing digital world is to solve cross-border payments friction problems and drive the world's liquidity into a system that they will use. Now is a good time to remind everyone that Ripple just joined the BIS task force to help with just such a problem. And I also want to remind you that I'm a horrible typer and spelled a couple words wrong in that post. <laughs> this is the clip that reminds everybody of it. And all I can say is, look, we've seen the, we've seen the advancements and expansion of BRICS, right? We're getting ready to see uh, G20 and try to find out as much as we can what is going to happen on the global stage when it comes to collaborating on crypto regulation, stablecoin regulation. What are we going to see going forward in the future? All I know is, is that we know that Ripple is involved with so many incredible, incredible banks, central banks, financial systems, partners, companies, FedNow, Faster Payments Council, you name it, it's all coming at the same time. These are not mutually exclusive events, and I cannot wait to see what it looks like on the other side of it all. That's going to do it for me, not financial advice. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe, leave a comment below, and share with somebody you know. I'll catch all of you on the next one.